Dave and Matt, DSX Tuning, back again uh, on our video series on the Atlas port controller uh, and its other auxiliary devices. Today, uh, we are covering boost control. Uh, so, the Atlas port controller, very capable device. We have a lot of plans on the roadmap, and one of the bigger ones that people have been asking about is boost control. Uh, if you want to start expanding on that as far as, hey, why are we adding that to this guy sure. and what's it going to look like? Well, really quick, I just want to make a distinction. I know that out there, there is now the Atlas Boost Controller, which was released by the Tuning School. That's a full standalone unit meant to cover a lot of different applications, whereas we have you know, willingly pigeonholed ourselves into one spot for this thing. So if, if you're curious, they're not the same thing. They're not affiliated um, yeah. So this will not be a standalone. Correct. This is an expansion device for the Atlas port controller. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a very targeted thing. Uh, we opted to do this because you know, everybody asks for it anyway. When I, when I first dreamed this thing up, I even thought, man, you know what? It'd be really cool if we could just take over the bypass valve. We can do it based on all of this information. So this has been on the board, so to speak, for... You know, coming up seven years. But then looking at the available options out there, I know that durability was a big concern with everybody. I wasn't thrilled with what we could get our hands on. Sure. From a durability aspect, but also from a cost aspect. So this will serve as an expansion device for the Atlas port controller. Basically, we'll provide you with the necessary hardware and whatnot yep. uh, to expand off of the uh, controller connector uh, and connect to the hardware. Yeah, and so the, the way this works, we, we build the whole system in-house. So we've got a mount that will attach to the blower, and that's what holds the servo. Well, actuator, I guess I should get used to calling it an actuator. There's actually, on the LT4, for example, there's an arm, the linkage between the actuator and the actual bypass valve. So we machine all of that, and we use a servo from a company, an actuator, sorry, <laughs> from a company called High Tech. Uh, this is an industrial-grade can-based IP67 rated actuator meant for drones. Um, it's a pretty robust unit. It's got five times the torque of what else you may find out there. Uh, these things are super fast. They're super strong. I think the, the can-driven part is a big part of it because this kind of goes back to the wideband topic. Like, we can get data out of these things. We can monitor their health. We can monitor how much current they're consuming, how much torque they're generating. You can just do a lot with it. So, you know, it, it's a nice piece. Unfortunately, it makes up almost half of the cost of these things. My next talking point was going to be, hey, what makes it better? And I, I think we went through that. Uh, well, so I think hardware-wise, it's, it's going to be very clear that this is, this is a pretty robust piece. I mean... Well, another purpose-built piece. Yeah. It, it was designed from scratch, meant to do something very specific. And then... You know, beyond that, because we have access to CAD data, we've got our own CNC machines, we do all of this stuff in-house on our own, we do the design, we do the programming, we do the cutting, everything. We can make sure this stuff fits, it's very easy to install on a car, you don't have collisions with a bunch of other stuff, and the install just winds up being super simple. Uh, you know, talking about installation, to add this to your Atlas port controller, you're just pinning four wires into this connector. So when, when you buy this, part of what you're gonna get is a harness that's gonna plug into this actuator. And on the other end of it, there's four pre-crimped ends. We'll tell you where to put them. There's some changes you make in the firmware and you go. Done deal. Let's expand on that a little bit and talk about the modes of control sure. that are gonna be available. We briefly touched on it in the overview, like the intro video. Uh, but what's that going to look like, and what is it? Why is that unique compared to what else is out there? Sure. The core of the boost control is based off of a table that gives you RPM versus throttle position. So we don't use pedal position because that's, that's just not how you're supposed to do it. Sure. It's more relevant to use actual throttle position. So you've got this base table where you can set up your percentage. You know, 100% is full closed, zero is full open you can map your bypass valve to your throttle. That's, that's where you start. We'll give you a pre-populated table that will be developed on our car here that kind of matches stock drivability for the most part. Beyond that, there's gonna be all of these multipliers, uh, modifiers, you know, whatever you wanna call them. Ethanol, 
that's a big one. Everybody wants to be able to you know, turn so the boost, boost, boost by ethanol. Boost by ethanol. So if you're running less ethanol content, let's say you had to stop and get 93 octane, you can make this thing limit your boost based on that. Beyond that, there's boost by front wheel speed. We use front wheel speed because if you're doing a big gnarly <laughs> burnout, it yeah. kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, in GM land, it's referred to undriven wheel speed. So you've got undriven front, driven back. We have boost by gear. So if you want to modify it by that, whether it's an automatic or a manual, you can do that. That's fine. We've got boost by drive mode. So your standard default for your car is always touring mode. If you put it into sport or you put it into track or even snow slash ice, you can have different modifiers to change that relation. So, I mean, you, you can set up snow mode to be totally dead pedal, super boring or valet mode, whatever you want to call it. Touring can be awesome. something, you know, on and on. Uh, beyond that, we've got some things that really aren't going to be possible for somebody else to do. Um, traction control. And maybe that's a misnomer saying it's not possible, but the model-based control that we're using for this, uh, when I say model-based control, we're actually keeping track of the actual area, the open area of that valve, which is the same thing GM does with a throttle body. That helps with the traction control strategy. You'll be able to define your slip versus front wheel speed. And all of that's variable. And then based on that, you can define how aggressive you want it to try and wrangle things back in. Um, that will function a lot better if you already have a good boost versus front wheel speed setup. To go further than that, though, we have boost by knock retard. So let's say all of a sudden you got, you know, for whatever reason, you get six degrees of knock retard. Well, you can set the controller up to start backing boost out, and then it'll feed it back in as the knock fades away, or the knock response, I should say, fades away. You can set that up however you want. The other really cool thing, though, is that we've got boost by intake charge temperature. So we actually keep track of the actual charge temperature that's going into the, the cylinder, calculated by the ECU. That's, that's a legit ECU output value. It's part of our patch. We watch that. So now if your IATs are getting out of control because you've been just wailing on your car, you can, you can pull boost out. Awesome. Um, so covered modes of control. Uh, the next thing is application. Uh, so obviously, we're going to support the LT4 supercharger, the right. factory factory supercharger. Um, Magnuson 2650, yep, uh, big one on the list. Um, as far as future support goes, uh, kind of the sky's the limit. I think if there are other applications that need to be handled, uh, it would be based on demand. Yep. Uh, the nice parts uh, about any of this is you can just talk directly to this guy and if yeah, we're we, real people if we find that there's a major use case uh it's possible to add that as long as that manufacturer will openly share information and, and, and we can get that part handled uh cost you want to I, I know we talked briefly hey we're thinking it's here there but for what else is out there really affordable yeah i think for the magnuson it's going to be notably cheaper um, just because there's a lot less to it because, I mean, where it's going to go, it's, it's right there. Uh, making the linkage arm for the LT4 is kind of, <laughs> kind of a pain in the ass. Kind of ridiculous. Uh, but I, I think we're targeting about five or 600 bucks retail. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the actuator is a big part of the cost. Half of that cost. Yeah. Free update for anybody that owns the, yep. the unit. Yeah, um, it's, it's built into the code. Like, you're not going to have to unlock any part of the software or upgrade anything else. Literally, your, your only effort is going to be pitting these wires in right. the connectors. So, so not again, a send the unit back to us deal. This will be uh, really easy peasy. So C7 people, sorry, you gotta go back in the fender. <laughs> yeah. Once again. Yeah, you can probably do it with the wheel liner out, but I don't know. Uh, timeline. Uh, a lot of people, I mean, basically that's people's number one concern. When we talked about Atlas initially, hey, when can I have it? Boost control. When do you think they can have it? Good question. Two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> taking a cue out of HP Tuner's book. Uh, no, I mean, we, we obviously want to flesh this out. I, I don't know that anybody really realizes this, but when it comes to the actual port control function, it seems like it's really simple, but there's probably eight months of hell that the Camaro had to survive at wide open throttle on the dyno for 
2,500 plus miles just pouring through everything. And I mean, this isn't gonna be any different. We're gonna wanna make sure that this has been fleshed out and functions the way we want it to, and that we add the options that we need to. I mean, one thing we've been talking about is uh, adding a parameter to control the response time of the actuator. So this thing is stupidly fast, but you may wanna turn that down. You know, just cause you smashed that pedal down, you may not want this thing to react as fast as you, you know, your foot does. I don't know. We're, we're going to have to play with it a little bit, see what works, and, and go from there. I think everybody's going to be curious how you set this up. So I know with the fuel side, you do that in the web UI. There's only one function that you're going to use the web interface for. It's an auto-learn function. So if you saw it, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> this, this thing has to know where it's supposed to go. So in the web UI, you'll click a button with the key on, engine off, and this thing's going to shoot over to almost full closed and then it's going to slow down and it's slowly going to touch off on the mechanical stop and it's going to look for a big increase in current consumption and when it finds that it's going to record that position it's going to tell the the ui hey this is my max position this is my minimum position and then you'll have to commit that to the port controller if you don't do that step it's going to just live at 60 percent open and or 60 degrees rather 60 degrees off of full uh which is kind of in like a no man's land between open and closed but uh we're not going to let it work unless you do the learn you you have to do that yeah. as far as actual control and dialing everything in that was just going to be too much to put into the web ui like there, there's only so much this thing can handle sure. through a web page yeah so we'll give you you'll, you'll have the bin file You'll have an XDF to do this in Tuner Pro, and you can set all your stuff up. But again, you'll still be able to log everything in HP Tuners. I think that about covers it for boost control. Uh, again, if you have any questions, Dave at DSXTuning.com, Matt at DSXTuning.com. We'll do our best to keep up on that. And uh, we will likely uh, do a Q&A uh, where we take uh, some responses uh, you know, for, for things that are common inquiries and put that into another video. Thanks again. Thank you.